there's a certain element, a certain part of me, Joe, that that is a real pessimist. But I, I think you really have to get yourself worked up into a knot to really uh, to, to be overly worried about the contractual situation of Nylander, Marner, and Matthews because I just I just think it's going to work out. I've, I've seen nothing so far that suggests to me this management group can't make it work. Well, I would agree with you, Jeff. I, I don't think there's any reason to get anybody's shorts in a knot at this particular point. Uh, this isn't the first time that a player – hasn't quite got their deal done prior to training camp. And then I would be very surprised if Nylander would report. After all, if he doesn't have a a contract and he ends up getting hurt, then there's a bit of an issue. So uh, if they don't have it done by then, uh, I'm sure it will get done uh, certainly before the uh, season starts. And and I don't anticipate a a problem with Matthews and Marner going forward. uh, this team has handled its cap situation extraordinarily well over the last little while. And they have, uh, they've got, uh, all these, obviously they have space and obviously they have the money. So um, I think that this will all get uh, ironed out and everything will be duckety do. And uh, we can look forward to a, a very exciting hockey season. Duckety do? Duckety do. That's my term for everything's going to be just copacetic. Okay. I like Duckety Do. I'm well, not, I do too. I'm not certain I'd want to drop that after a couple of pops. That's the only thing I well, can no, see. No, you have to be you, you, you have to be careful. And at uh, you know, nine forty five AM you're usually pretty good. Yeah, that, that that's true. <laughs> what do you, what do you, what are you most what are you most looking forward to seeing to Joe when you show up at that, you know, that first that official workout and, and things are going you know, it's like anything else. You you know, you look at the analytics and everything, but it's still it's like going to spring training the first time you walk out uh, and, and you see somebody, you see the team working out, something catches your eye. There's, there's some sense of excitement about it. There's a newness, all that, all that good stuff. What are you kind of looking forward to seeing when you get there? You mean other than the donuts? Other than the donuts, yes. Or, or the duckety <laughs> doos or whatever. And maybe, maybe a free coffee. <laughs> well, obviously, you know, at training camp, you're always looking to see if there's a young, a youngster on the horizon that has made the next step, that has gotten uh, better and is, and is uh, moving in the right direction to be there. And, uh, I mean, obviously, the Maple Leafs have a wealth of talent, young talent already on their roster. But you're also looking at a team that groomed a number of players through the Calder Cup playoffs and winning the ultimate prize there. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, people like Mason Marchment, uh, I'm looking forward to seeing uh, the uh, young defenseman, uh, Igor Azhaganov, and, and I think maybe somebody else that might, and, and, and certainly Lilligren, have they made uh, substantial strides to have some of the people on the roster looking over their shoulder? Uh, I think Kapanen, uh, Timoshov, people like that who have been around are probably ticketed to maybe replace the people that have left as in Bozak and, and uh, uh, Van Riemsdyk uh, and others, uh, Dominic Moore. But that's, that's what I'm looking forward to. And I'm also looking forward to seeing if Frederick Goche has made the final step that he can be maybe the big fourth line center that can win faceoffs, kill penalties and add some size to a team that really doesn't have a great deal of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, uh, that's what I'm kind of looking forward to. And the other thing that I'm really looking forward to is the battle in goal. Um, here's a kid uh, and Garrett Sparks who um, did everything that you could possibly do at the American Hockey League level last year. Won the ultimate prize, uh, was the best goaltender in the entire American Hockey League, and he deserves a real good look to put some pressure on uh, the goaltending situation going forward. And, and I think that's what I'll be looking at uh, uh, but you know what the nice thing about my job, Jeff, in 37 years of doing this, not once has a coach or manager asked for my opinion, which is probably why I've gone through 15 coaches and 11 managers. Yeah, that, that, that explains the longevity. That's, why, that's one of the reasons. Yeah, that's that's right. one of the reasons. People who have to make decisions sometimes aren't around all the time. So <laughs> I, I prefer to provide my free analysis once they have decided on who's going to play. Well, I can I can say this I can say this, Bones. You're the only you're the only person who's done the same job for a long as long a period of time without ever being wrong. 
and, and I and I give you I give you credit for that because that. that my yeah. friend that my friend is an art is an art. You mentioned Timothy Lilligren, and and he's a guy that 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 kind of intrigues me just because you know right hand shooting defenseman. We we know how valuable a commodity those are around the NHL right now, but he's he, you know he doesn't address I don't think all the all the things we we might think this team needs but he's so talented if 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 that talent arrives a year before the leafs are ready for it to arrive or if it all comes together a year ahead of time it could be an interesting scenario for this team because i think he he might be a guy who's hard to keep down once he's ready to once he's ready to play at an elite level yeah i agree and and uh, when you only have connor carrick and nikita zaitsev as your right-handed shot defenseman uh, he does have an opportunity. He may be the guy that's sort of on the yo-yo this year, coming up and going down, depending on uh, injuries and situations of that ma- uh, uh, magnitude. Travis uh, Dermott, I think, is going to be a big key. And obviously, Nikita Zaitsev's got to have a bounce-back season. I don't think he was happy with his year last year after signing uh, the contract uh, last year. He needs to bounce back and play better. Um, and I think everybody is looking at this roster and seeing a great deal of skill, uh, quickness, speed. And then you get the old guys like me that go, you know what? There's not an awful lot of sandpaper here. And mm-hmm. there's not an awful lot of sandpaper uh, coming up from the miners as well. And uh, that is an area I think that when you saw the Stanley Cup final last year, there was a great deal of physicality in that series. And I think that is something that, you know, it's a philosophical situation that Kyle Dubas and and Mike Babcock have uh, adhered to. uh, But it will be interesting to see if they can maintain that, because uh, sometimes you do have to have a little bit of physicality to keep everybody uh, feeling comfortable. And uh, Matt Martin's not here anymore. Uh, Joe, do the Leafs need a captain? Do they they need do they need to name a captain early in the season? That's a good answer. No, I, 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 this is this has been an ongoing thing that uh, fans and media people have harped upon. Answer me this: What does a captain do? What what does that C on his sweater do that wouldn't allow someone else without that to do in the dressing room or on the ice? I'm not certain that. Given the and way my, the game is I, gone I, now, I, I don't think it makes that much difference, Joe, to be honest. No, I really don't. No, no. It's, it's a little kid thing. Oh, you're the captain of the minor midget team, or you're the captain of the peewee team. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably their best player. Well, that doesn't matter. It really doesn't. The leadership of a hockey team or a group comes from within, and it comes from in the dressing room, and it's the personalities that are in that room. Everybody in the room will know who the leader or leaders are. It doesn't have to have a C on. The only reason there is a person with a C on in most organizations and everything else is when things go bad, he has to stand up in front of the media and explain why. 